you set off on that adventure, not knowing what the outcome was going to be, but you had to remain positive in your thinking. My name is Norman Surplus. I'm uh, mid forties. I'm proposing to fly this aircraft around the world. It's been about five years in the planning. This was after uh, a period of uh, cancer. Coming out the other end of that, I decided to have something uh, different to, to challenge me, and, uh, and this is the result. Even though the first gyroplane flew in 1923, 87 years ago, it's the only type of aircraft in existence that uh, has never been around the world. It's really only in the last 10 years that you might say you've got a, an aircraft that it's, that's uh, capable of flying around the world. Notably, physically, uh, the range of the aircraft has had to be extended uh, to get across the, uh, the wide expanse of the North Atlantic. And we're going to be doing that by adding uh, some special fuel bags into the back seat. The aircraft could actually fly uh, without any of this uh, cockpit around it. Uh, structurally, the, the, it's just this, this uh, framework which is actually holding the whole thing together. The daily checks and the daily repairs are small things uh, I would be able to do. Um, anything more major, I would be calling uh, the factory. It's very much a team effort you are in constant communication. But at the end of the day, it is you sitting there um, flying a big lump of metal, uh, which has to get you back down on the ground again. So the route in general, we're setting off from uh, Larne here in, in County Antrim, Northern Ireland, crossing to France, avoiding the Alps, the other side of Italy, through Greece, through to Crete, and then striking over to Egypt, the, the rules that we fly under, visual flight rules in a, a gyro, mean that you have to fly visually, you can't fly by instrument, you can't fly at night, and uh, you have to fly within sight of the ground. So by, uh, by default you have to be down on the ground every night. Avoiding Iran into Pakistan, straight across India, through Burma, into Thailand, drop down, up Sarawak, through the Philippines, and so it is a series of day trips um, that the scenery keeps moving uh, underneath, pretty much following the coastline into Alaska, across the Rockies, around the Great Lakes, past Niagara, up the coastline of Hudson Bay. The challenge of you know, finding fuel, finding accommodation, there's still quite a lot of room for adventure on the ground as well as in the air. Across to Iceland, across the Faroes, across the Outer Hebrides, and then through the islands. If you can do 300 miles in a day, as a day trip, um, well, you just do that, and then the next day you do it again, the next day you do it again, you just carry on. And eventually you get around the world. It's the ultimate round trip, as it were.